okay let's begin <coughs> so in the last few classes uh, we have been looking at the five transistor ota the single stage ota and uh, to jog your memory as to how we arrived at the circuit so uh, we essentially started with a simple common source configuration but then we decided we wanted to amplify the difference between two signals so from here we decided that we'll apply the second input v2 to the source but through a voltage buffer and that voltage buffer we uh, realized using how do we implement the buffer yeah common drain let me see if it goes yeah it's okay so that gave rise to this differential pair and then we had this but here we saw we had to increase the gain we had to increase the value of the resistor and that created issues with respect to the uh, swing limits so we decided to replace this resistor here which is not going away by a pmos transistor and here finally we had to generate the bias voltage and so finally that uh, gave rise to the the five transistor ota that we have been looking at so there we took the pmos transistors and to generate the gate bias we simply went and did this okay and in this structure i mean in all these structures essentially the gain is some gm times r out and what is the short circuit gm in all of these it is a gm of this guy okay it is a single stage ota implying there is only one transistor or a pair of transistors that convert the incoming voltage to a current so uh, basically if you have to increase the gain you'll have to increase this product right and for a single stage ota you just have gm coming from one transistor which means we'll have to increase the gm of a transistor and beyond some point you can't keep doing it so let's see if we can increase the output resistance okay and for that i'll basically start with this simple structure we'll see how to increase the output resistance here and once we have this we can go from here to here okay so first let me actually take uh, the single ended stuff we have so let's say this is vi let me label it say m2 and m8 so uh, remember that uh, for this pmos the gate is connected at some bias voltage so that it carries a required current and everything is in saturation right and ideally you want this guy to provide a particular current so in principle you want this to behave like a current source right and if this were an ideal current source what would be the incremental resistance looking to uh, that side infinite and that's what you want ideally right but of course that is not the case because this is a mos transistor so uh, what is the output resistance looking up r not of the transistor so it is not a great current source but do you guys know some technique to make a uh, you guys know a technique to make a not so good current source into a better current source Uh, not cascading cas coding right i mean it's called cas code so i mean that's what we'll try to do so basically we this is the main current source i'll call it m8 instead of using it directly we'll pass this current through a current buffer which is a common gate structure right we already saw this for the nmos this is same for the pmos right and what is the impedance now looking here you can tell the exact expression let's then approximate later okay first let's write gm6 and then yeah plus ro6 plus r08 and for all practical reasons you can approximate this as the first term okay so that means i can go and put this guy as the load for the uh, this one so basically that gives rise to this the nmos is here so let's say that is connected to some bias and the small signal increment and at the pmos side i go and put the cascode so let's say m2 m6 
M8. And all of these are connected to appropriate bias voltages. This is V out. So what is the uh, incremental output here? Or let's say V out by V i. Yeah, okay, can you be careful? GM2 or something is missing? Minus GM2. Okay, yeah. So it's minus GM2 times. It is basically the total output resistance. So looking up, it's a cash code that you already have it. So that's GM6. And what is the impedance looking down? Parallel R02. So what is the, I mean, how can you approximate it? R02, right? Okay. So this is not helping because you have increased the resistance looking up. But looking down, it is still the same old R02. So it's not working. So what can you do? Ah, I mean, the logic is looking up, you have increased it. That's not helping because looking down, you still have only R0. So as he suggested, we can put a cast code for the NMOS stack also. So that will give rise to the structure. Okay. <laughs> So at the PMOS side, I have the CAS code. Similarly, at the NMOS side, I'll have another CAS code. So remember, this is where I apply the small signal input. I label the transistors. Okay. So with some bias voltage. So here is all appropriate voltages connected. And here, if I tap the output from this point, what does the small signal gain? Again, the GM is only contributed by this transistor. Input is applied there. The transistor is what converts the voltage to an equivalent current. So times the output resistance, what is that? What, what is the impedance looking up? That is a cast code, you know, GM6 R06 times R08. In parallel with the impedance looking down, what is what is that? GM4 R04 times R02. So, so let me write it here <coughs> in parallel with GM4 R04 not fine. And if I just look at the order of magnitudes for all this, this is some GM times some GM R0 R0, right? So this is of the order of minus GM R0 square. So we definitely have boosted the gain. So uh, this is the single ended. So let's quickly make differential. So again, we, we have improved this structure. So from here, we'll go here and then convert this to a single ended output like we did. So let me draw that then. So if you draw the differential picture, we'll have something like this. one side and the other side will have this. Okay. So let me label it here maybe. So again, these are all, I mean, these all need to be connected to appropriate bias voltages so that everyone is in saturation. We'll come to that later. So here we remove some space. Okay. Okay. Cool. So again, uh, this might look big, but remember that the uh, whatever we have here is the NMOS differential pair, right? So I'll just say it's NMOS diff pair. 
so this guy is acting like a cascode to boost the output resistance so this is the this stack is the nmos cascode <coughs> similarly this stack is the pmos cascode and the topmost one is the current source that is actually providing the current okay so if you want to change the current in the pmos you have to change this guy this is just a cascode cool uh, yeah so now we have this we'll again uh, try to convert it to a single ended output like how we did in the five transistor ota so the each goal is we have to obtain this bias voltage here appropriately okay so let me actually copy this and for that i will probably remind you to how we did that in the five transistor case so in our earlier circuit this was the setup we had just had one nmos and one pmos connected like this right this was i not and uh, in this case the goal was to uh, generate a bias voltage vb here so that the current flowing through the pmos transistor is what i not by 2 again this current is i not by 2 if i call the current through the pmos as ix Ideally, you want to provide a voltage VB so that the current flowing through the PMOS transistor is also I not by two, right? So again, if you are, uh, I mean, if you uh, let's say you apply a voltage VB there, and you find that the current I X is greater than I not by two, so if that is the case, what can you say about the voltage V X? I mean, we are pushing in more current into the into that node. then we are then the current that is getting pulled out so the voltage will <coughs> increase i mean remember that will always be some kind of parasitic capacitor at each node right so if this current is greater than this current that excess current is going to flow to the parasitic capacitor and the voltage will keep increasing right so if this is the case vx increases but as a corrective action what should you do to the current ix should you increase ix or decrease ix here so i'll say i we need to decrease ix this is a pmos current i mean pmos transistor to decrease the current in the pmos transistor what should you do to the gate voltage i have to increase the gate voltage vb so again you uh, we find that we have to increase this voltage this is also automatically increasing so what can we do can go and connect and that's basically how we obtain this connection right so let's repeat the same here also so here again the goal is to generate let us say this bias voltage vb8 okay so the current flowing in these two halves are i not by 2 so remember that whatever current flows here will flow here also because it's just a current buffer so if i look at this current now ix we want this current ix to be equal to the current flowing in the nmos side which is i not by 2 so again we can follow the same logic if ix is greater than i not by 2 this node potential will keep increasing now to correct for this we have to reduce the current ix and for reducing ix what which of the voltages here you will change ha huh? vb6 why vb6 and remember what is the current source here this guy is the current source that's what sets the current right so what should you change vb8 okay remember that this is what is setting the current source and this is just acting like a buffer passing that current okay so i have to increase vb8 so what can i do Yeah, I'll just show that. Yeah. So basically, we go and do this. Okay. Hmm? It is the same thing. I mean, earlier we didn't have this current buffer. Now we are having the buffer. That's the only difference. So why can't we connect it to the gain? Ah, exactly. That's a good question. We can do that. We'll come to it in the next class. Okay. Uh, remind me. Exactly. We can also do this, but that is also an option. We'll see what are the differences. 
So, but this is clear. This is something. This is one way in which you can bias it. But of course, now these voltages we have to apply appropriately. So, yeah. Okay. So this uh, structure is called the uh, telescopic cascode. Because apparently it looks like a telescope. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So now we have come. I mean, uh, got this new circuit. We'll repeat the same exercises we did for the uh, earlier case. We'll try to find the DC operating point, small signal gain, the common mode range, and slew rate. Those four things we'll calculate. So first, let's start with the operating point. So again, operating point. So I assume that both gates are biased at the same voltage VB. So in this case, what can you say about the two currents I1 and I2? Same. It is same. Uh, you can argue the same way as we did for the phi transistor OTA. That uh, again, you can also invoke the uh, symmetry argument. We saw that if we apply a common mode excitation wherein the gate to source voltage is the same, then this asymmetrical circuit. Become symmetrical, so all the voltages, node voltages on the left half will be equal to the corresponding voltages on the right half, and the currents will be equal. Otherwise, you can uh, invoke contradictory arguments and prove that this is equal to this. Okay. Similarly, if I call this as VD five and VD six, what can you say about these two voltages? I mean, I have written already. Yeah. Huh? They have, they have to be equal. And what is setting this voltage? I mean, what is this voltage equal to, or what is setting this voltage? Huh? The gate voltage of M7 is what is setting <coughs> this voltage. So, what is VD5? Yeah. If this is VDD. VDD minus the sorry this way VDD minus the source to gate voltage of M7. Okay. So this is equal to VDD minus source to gate voltage of M7 at a current I0 by 2. Okay, then let's look at these voltages, say VD1 and VD2. Now again, we know these two voltages are equal. That is known. But what is setting that voltage? Vd5 minus Vd5. Sorry. Vd5 minus Vd5. Drain voltage of M5. Why is that setting this voltage? The voltage drop will occur. Yeah, but uh, that is not fixing the voltage, right? I mean, it's a drain to source drop. That is up to you to choose. But in this circuit, if I, I mean, what is setting this voltage? Can you see? Huh? Ah, how? Yeah. Why? Why is that so? I mean, see, uh, the argument is. Remember that. Yeah. I mean, as long as I apply the same gate voltage, what can you say about these two currents? They are equal to I naught by two. <coughs> current is fixed. If the current flowing through all the transistors are fixed. What can you say about the gate to source voltage? They are fixed. So which means whatever you do, this drop is fixed, isn't it? And that drop is the gate to source voltage of M4 at that corresponding current of I0 by 2. So which means this is equal to it is the gate voltage VB4. That is something you will be applying, right? Whatever voltage you apply as VB4. Minus the gate to source voltage of M4 at a current I0 by 2. Is that clear? And because remember that in a transistor the current mainly depends on gate to source voltage. The moment you fix the current, loosely speaking, gate to source voltage is also fixed, right? Okay, so if that is clear, uh, help me with this VD7, VD8. Again, these two are equal, but what is fixing this voltage? Ah, so here again, you see, for the PMOS transistor, 
this is the source voltage right we have already fixed the gate voltage to some vb6 so that will be deciding it and uh, tell me what is this guy vb6 plus the source to gate voltage of whatever m5 or m6 at a current okay again remember that only gate to source voltage is fixed if the current is fixed drain to source voltage can be anything right again because ideally you want the mosfet to have a characteristics like this this is the id vds isn't it so for a given current you can have any drain to source voltage okay cool so this is the dc operating point then let's move on to the uh, small signal calculations is this clear should i explain again okay okay yeah let's do small signal v1 v2 again we can compute it as product of the short circuit transconductance and the output resistance and you can also decompose this as a common mode part differential part find the common mode response differential mode response and sum it up like we did in the last class you take that as an exercise and work out but i will compute it this way so first let's start with short circuit gm so what do i do to the output short no points for guessing that so this is i out so again uh, let me just mark it here current source is open in the small signal picture this is short so first we have to find the source voltage right again i will not do it i will uh, use the results we did i mean we, we obtained for the earlier ota so first tell me what is the impedance looking here it is looking into the source it's 1 by gm if the drain is at a low impedance here the drain is short you can definitely say it's approximately 1 by gm4 similarly what can you say about the impedance looking here it is 1 by gm again if this drain is at a low impedance this drain is at 1 by gm4 so we can safely approximate that this is 1 by gm2 now let's do it here uh, similarly what is the first of all what is the impedance here what do you think that is okay for this i gave it in the assignment also right if you had something like this approximately what is the impedance here it's so 1 by gm okay but in this case you can even safely say it because i mean everyone is satisfied that if i make this connection the resistance is 1 by gm why is that so because if you apply a test voltage here the same test voltage is applied to the gate so you are drawing a gm times v test so it's 1 by gm but now what we have done is the following see this was earlier connection gate and drain were shorted but now we went ahead and put a current buffer here right so which means even if you apply the same test voltage the same gm vt current flows the current buffer buffers the current okay is that fine so the resistance is approximately 1 by gm there also again okay, but again to be slightly careful in the five transistor ota we saw the impedance here is not exactly 1 by gm this 1 by gm times some small factor right and there it was correct because any test voltage you apply here is also applied here so this branch will produce some current and a fraction of it comes here but in this experiment i have shorted the output right so whatever current flows here it will directly go to the output and nothing comes here so here you can say that it's i mean even otherwise it's 1 by gm5 into a small fraction so but it's still a small value is that okay so it's finding the we are finding the impedance looking up huh. Yeah, actually, his point is also correct. Yeah, then correct, correct. Then it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you're looking at only the impedance, looking up, it's one by gm. You are right. Yeah, because that contribution of this current comes in this bottom half. Yeah, that's correct. Thanks. So the bottom line, this is one by gm five. So that's a small impedance. So which means, what can you say about this impedance? 
looking into the source it's 1 by gm provided the drain is at a small impedance which in this case it is correct so now what is this i'll say 1 by gm2 again if that is true if the drain is at a smaller impedance in this case it is okay 1 and 2 are equal so i'm just making it same okay so then what can you say about this voltage vx <coughs> Yeah, again we derived for the phi transistor case. It was basically if you draw the circuit, you start by finding contribution due to V1 to Vx and then V2 to Vx. From V1, the effective circuit looks like this. So this is the transistor, and looking here, it's 1 by gm. So you go and put 1 by gm here, <coughs> and then you find it, and uh, this will work out to be. So in that case, what is this current I one? Yeah, G M. I'll say G M two times V one minus V two by two. Okay. So which means what is this current? Same I one. So the same I one flows here. So that gets mirrored in the right side. So what is the total short circuit current? Yeah. So that's basically G M two into V one minus V two. it's all the same thing we did for the uh, old ota so short circuit transconductance is should not be a surprise because it is this transistor which takes in the voltage and converts it to a current so the short circuit gm must be coming from this guy from finding uh, that resistance which resistance can you ha uh -huh. hmm Yeah, I mean that's a tricky thing. Now, if you are just looking at the current, looking up, it doesn't come, right? Basically, the current is in this direction. Then you don't have to consider that. It's a tricky thing. I mean, what do you? I mean, you can't distinguish saying what is the current going up and down. But let's not get into the nitty gritties. The point I wanted to make is, looking here, it's a small impedance. Okay. because it's tricky to say what current goes up and comes down i mean if you change the direction it's all fine right but the point i'm getting is this is still a small impedance that's all okay is this okay so this is short circuit gm let's uh, find the output resistance So again, I'll open this, guys. So gates are incrementally shorted. I apply test voltage here. Yeah. So once again, this test current will have split both up and down. We have to sum up both. So the current flowing down here depends on the impedance looking down. So let's quickly see what that is. If I draw that alone here, I have M4. Get a short, and then M two, and this resistance is again approximately one by G M two. We have already seen, so it's one by G M two. So what is the resistance looking down here? It's the same triple cascode, but okay, let's split it up, right? So first, let's look at this portion. We'll consider one stack at a time. What is the equivalent resistance here? Yeah, I mean you can write it. It's one by GM two plus R not two plus GM two, and this is basically two times R not two. So this I can simplify it like this, and then. R not two and this is M four. So what is the resistance looking here? No, why? Where is one by G M four? Is this fine? What I have done till now is fine, right? So I, I mean, this portion is equal to two R not two. I have put it here. So this one more cascode again. Yeah, two. I mean, you can exact expression is two R zero two plus R zero four plus G M four. R not four times two R not two, 
and for I'll ignore these two. It's so approximately this. So if you try to find the uh, test current, it will have this portion of the current flowing down, GM4. Okay. So this is the current flowing down. Again, this is similar to what we did for the pi transistor. Okay? I'm just quickly doing it. So this current will have to flow here, right? And that flows here. It also gets mirrored. So the upcurrent will also have this component. In addition, what else we have? Upcurrent. We also have the impedance due to the cascode of the upside, right? Because remember that even for the earlier case, we saw uh, the current mirroring action takes into account the GM VGS portion of the current. We also have the current due to the drain to source dependence. And that is basically the cascode resistance of these two guys. Okay. And if you are not convinced, you can again do the same way. Uh, this current is basically I1. So this voltage, if I call it Vx, I mean not Vx, maybe something. Say some, I don't know, Vy. Vy will be approximately I1 by GM5 or GM7, sorry. So, okay, I made a mistake there. Hold on. See, this is not, okay, what... This is looking here. What is the resistance? Ah, uh, seven. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. Okay. Because remember, it's connected to the gate of M seven, so it is that transistor which that will you know provide uh, sink or source the current. Okay. So hopefully here it's also yeah okay. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, while calculating the equivalent, so we grounded the 1 by GM2 pass. We didn't take into account the looking up impedance of M3, M5, M7. Uh, of yeah, I mean, M3, M5, M7 here. I mean, see, basically, if you remember, we tried to find the contribution of the currents flowing down and up separately. Mm -hmm. So, the point is, if you want to find the current that is flowing down, you find the equivalent resistance. And looking up, it's 1 by GM as long as the drain resistance here is small. It does not matter whatever you connect here. Mm -hmm. As long as the resistance connected to the drain of the transistor is smaller than the R0 of the transistor, looking into the source is 1 by GM. Mm -hmm. And looking here is small, we know already, it is of the order of 1 by GM, 1 by GM of M7. Mm -hmm. As long as that is smaller than the R0 of this transistor, mm -hmm. I can safely say this is 1 by GM. So that is why it does not matter what you connect here, this is still 1 by GM. You exact calculation, you have to take everything, but again, it will all finally approximate to this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no point in writing, if you have some 8 notes, you do not want to write 8 KCL equations, solve everything. Quick quick calculations is what we are interested. Yeah, so basically, yeah, so what I was getting at is, uh, so the upside will have current, this current, that is coming due to the VGS portion, because uh, this VY is approximately I1 by GM7, so GM7 times this voltage, this is a gate voltage, GM7 times this voltage will be a portion of the current flowing here. In addition, we will also have the current due to the drain to source voltage, that is the cascode resistance. And what is that? What is the cascode looking up? Okay. I mean, please go back and check how we did for the 5 transistor OT, it is the same thing. Just that the resistances have become cascoded, that's all. So then can you tell me what is the output <laughs> resistance? Yeah, GM4, R04, R02. Yeah, that's all. Okay. I mean, finally it all works out as the cascode impedance looking down in parallel with the cascode impedance looking up. But that is not, I mean, yeah, but does not mean looking down it is so and looking up is so, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, then we know this, let me write it. So the gain here is, so uh, can you tell me the final gain here? This is the V out. Mm -hmm. 
yeah minus i mean minus gm2 into what is the output resistance it is basically the cascode of this in parallel with the cascode of this finally which is gm4 4r02 okay so again this is of the order of minus gm or not square right so we are basically increase the gain by one order of magnitude okay so this is uh, the small signal so let's quickly finish the uh, slew rate and common mode range yeah let's do the slew rate that's easier so again for finding the slew rate i am assuming at the output i have a capacitor cl so at let's say one side i apply something delta v here it's this the same experiment so if i keep increasing delta v what happens at after some delta v max which transistor goes to cut off m2 so the current here will be zero so all the current flows here so that current also flows here gets mirrored in this direction and everything flows to the output so what is the slew rate it's i not by cl similarly in the negative side also you can again prove that it is same okay in this case it will come to be same cool so this is simple then let's look at the uh, common mode ranges at the input and output so first let's start with the input common mode range so this means i am going and doing this experiment wherein let's say this is some v okay so firstly if i keep reducing vi tell me which transistor can go out of saturation or first let me convert this to also a transistor yeah i am not because again the current is fixed so gate to source voltage is fixed so if this drops this also drops that will take m not out of saturation so here i'll say it's limited by m0 so what is the minimum voltage i mean what is it it is basically this drop plus this drop right this gate to source is fixed that is vgs of m2 at a current i0 by 2 plus the minimum you can have here and what is that the overdrive voltage of the transistor m0 okay this is same thing we had for the five transistor voltage also okay so now let us say i keep increasing this voltage i mean the gate voltage which transistor can go out of saturation why ha ah, good right so as he pointing out Uh, we also saw in the operating point calculation so if i call it vd1 and vd2 vd1 and vd2 are fixed by which voltage vb4 right this is some voltage that we are applying minus so gate to source drop is fixing the drain voltage so as long as the currents are equal the drain voltage is same okay so which means if the drain voltage is same and i keep increasing the gate voltage the transistor goes out of saturation so let me write it so this is vb4 fine so what is the maximum the gate can go for a pmos it can go one threshold higher than the drain voltage okay so which means the maximum is this drain voltage plus a threshold right is okay i have written the drain voltage here and the maximum the gate can goes one threshold higher than that so this is going to be vb4 minus vgs4 at a current i0 by 2 okay now again remember that vb4 is a voltage that is under your control it will have its own ranges of voltages it will have a minimum voltage so that all transistors are in saturation 
and similarly a maximum voltage. So again, if you want to have the absolute maximum for the input, we go and keep PB4 at the maximum possible value you can have there. So that I will not compute now, this is enough as of now. So this is the input, so let us also quickly do the output. So we'll just yeah. So this is the output now. So tell me if I keep reducing output, which transistor can go out of saturation? M4 because gate voltage is fixed. So what is the minimum output can go? For a NMOS transistor, the drain can go one threshold below the gate voltage. Okay. So the gate voltage is VB4 minus VTH of M4. So this is limited by the transistor M4. That is straightforward. Similarly, what is limiting the maximum of V out? If I keep increasing V out, see again logically speaking. This voltage is increasing, so which means one of these two guys must have issues. So drain voltage is increasing, so NMOS will have issues or PMOS will have issues? PMOS. Again, for a PMOS transistor, this is NMOS, what is the maximum the drain can go? It is the gate voltage plus a mod VTH for a PMOS. So the upper side it is VB6, it is limited by M6. So once again, VB6 it's, will have its own ranges of voltages, same with VB4. Cool. So then let us do this. Now. So now let us say I uh, go and make, say this is the telescopic as code OTA. I go and put this in unity feedback like this. Now I know that at the input I have a ranges of voltages I can accommodate. Similarly at the output I have a range, range of voltages that I can accommodate. Now I am connecting both the input and the output. So what is the absolute minimum I can accommodate? I have two minimums. I should look at maximum of the two. So let us say this is minimum. So which of these two is the uh, maximum? I mean which of these two is higher? And can you, I mean you can actually make some statements. Oh. Okay, see at least I mean without going to a lot of details, right? This is 0 on VDD. If I climb up this stack, these node voltages will keep increasing or decreasing? I mean logically speaking it will increase, in most cases it will. So in that case, can you comment on uh, VB4 versus this voltage? Huh? VB4 is higher or I mean this voltage versus the gate voltage here. V4 typically will be higher than the gate voltage. So which means which of these two will be higher? I mean VA here is basically this voltage. I mean VB4 is higher in the stack than this voltage. So which means that will be higher. Is that okay? No? See overdrive can be really small, right? You want to you want this to be really small. So overdrive will be a very small number. Okay. I mean typically I am not saying every time. I mean of course you can design it such a way that the other voltage is higher. I am not saying that it is not impossible, but at least in most cases, it makes sense that this could be higher than this voltage here, fine. I mean because see whatever voltage you apply here, the drain has to be some so slightly higher than the gate voltage and VB4 has to be one gate to source voltage higher than the drain voltage. So VB4 most cases will be higher than, okay, is that logic okay? I mean again the drain voltage here has to be greater than this voltage so that it is sufficiently in saturation or at least equal to let us say. 
in top of it this is one gate source higher so typically this will be higher so i will say this is the maximum among the two minimum hmm? uh, sir, so it works in almost all of the cases or are we assuming that like this was here only see typically this will be the case right if that is the case this is it but i'm say i'm not saying that uh, you can't design a case where this will be the maximum of course you can uh, cleverly work out the voltages so that it doesn't work but mostly it will come out like this okay so again now let us look at the maximum so these are two maximums so what is the absolute maximum i should look at minimum among the two maximums so again which which will be uh, minimum do you think by the same logic this will be smaller okay at least here it should be clear vb6 is a typically higher voltage it's plus vth it is vb4 minus something okay. so let me what do we do yeah let me write it here the minimum is vb4 minus vth4 and the maximum is vb4 minus vgs4 the current i not by 2 plus vth2 let me copy this so this is the absolute minimum you can have this is the absolute maximum you can have when you put it in unity feedback okay so what is the range of voltages you can accommodate max minus min vth4 yeah okay let me write it the other way yeah okay vth2 let's say minus vgs4 at a current i not by 2 plus vth4 so what is this i can how can i simplify it further ah it is the overdrive voltage of m4 at a current i not by 2 and i mean if you, if you give, if i were to give you typical numbers let us say you are looking at uh, supplies of 0 to 1.8 volt in let us say in this case threshold voltage could be around let us say 0.4 volts overdrive is under your control so let us say you minimize it to say 50 millivolts or something so the maximum range you can have is what yeah this 350 millivolts right so although you have a supply ranging from 0 to 1.8 when you have this telescopic cascode op amp and you put it in unity feedback like this the absolute i mean the range of voltages you can accommodate so that all transistors remain in saturation is just around 350 millivolt right so that's terribly small so that is one issue so this has uh, i will say limited swings when you put in negative feedback sorry uh, unity feedback but of course uh, not always you will be using this in unity feedback right so if you don't use it in unity feedback then this constraint that v out is equal to vi will not be there so then this will be slightly decoupled in that case let us quickly find out uh, what is the maximum or minimum you can have for the output okay let's start it and we'll continue from the next class so let's see so this is the minimum and maximum i can have at the output and as you see it depends on the voltages vb6 and vb4 right so if i were to achieve the absolute minimum for the output i should look at maximum of vb4 or minimum of vb4 the minimum possible of vb4 is what i should look at similarly if i were to find the absolute maximum at the output i should try to maximize vb6 okay i'll try to find this guy so let's stop here and i'll continue from the next class okay